Angelica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Angelica Maria Koch with your educational videos and the most innovative and holistic approach for your well-being. I hope you're enjoying the new discovery series so far. It is called Healthy Family and Soul Medicine. And today I've chosen the theme breastfeeding ailments, which can be painful and confusing for the first time mom. As already mentioned in previous videos before, in this Discover series, I will only mention homeopathic remedies and natural supplements which are available over the counter at your local health food store, so nothing too complicated. You can do it too. Let's dive right into the subject today. My personal opinion about breastfeeding is, of course, I would love to see every mom out there to be able to breastfeed her child. But life circumstances or physical ailments sometimes don't support this process. And my message from our heart to you today is don't feel guilty here. A bottle-fed baby is fine too, as long as your relationship and your sort of, you know, bonding process is a healthy and a happy one. When purchasing a formula out there, make sure it's free of chemicals and preservatives. So what are the most common breastfeeding myth? The first one is I do not want to breastfeed my child because it will affect the shape of my body, the shape of my breasts. During pregnancy, your body does enlarge and breastfeeding might change the shape of your breast, but it shouldn't be the first denominator to say I do not want to breastfeed my child and maybe have a look at the aspects behind this statement and Maybe you find a different solution. And the breast will only produce milk. The baby needs no more or less. Again, that's an individual situation. If the mother, for example, goes through a very emotional, stressful period in her life while breastfeeding, the quality and the quantity, the flow of the milk can be affected. The breastfed baby can't get fat. Again, this is so individual and really depends on the constitution of the baby. If the baby has a slow metabolism, like it assimilates the milk in a much slower way, the babies tend to be more chubby and more fat. Remember in the last video where we talked about sleepless children, I mentioned the remedy or the homeopathic remedy called carp. And these children have a very slow development, slow metabolism, and they definitely are more chubby uh, despite being breastfed. The breastfed baby will gain the correct amount of weight. Again, something to watch out for. The baby's weight gain may not match sort of the clinic's gross chart, you know, to the T. As long as your baby is happy and you're contented with it, there's nothing to worry about. Breastfeeding comes naturally, right? The perfect mother doesn't need teaching. It's like an instinctual knowing. Again, I raise the question mark here. Some mothers take it like ducks to the water, but some don't. And how would they? A first time mom, how would she know? Especially if she has a cracked nipple and she's supposed to, you know, breastfeed her child, but she can't because it's so painful. Here again, reach out to your breastfeeding counselor, your local support group. Don't feel embarrassed, don't feel ashamed. It's your right to reach out for help. Before I show you some remedies, I want to explain to you the breastfeeding mechanism first. So milk is manufactured on a supply and demand basis. So the more the baby sucks, the more the mother can produce milk. But the babies have to milk the breast in a particular sucking way in order to get to the hind milk. So just sucking on the nipple isn't enough. They have to draw on the milk sacs and these are deposited behind the areola. So the baby has to get the nipple and the areola into the mouth. And the number of the milk sacs is the same in small breasts as in large breasts. So, you know, the idea of small breasts and I can't breastfeed doesn't work here. About a third of each feed is stored in these sacs and it is known as the foremilk. So this foremilk is low in fat and really serves mainly the thirst quenching aspect. Right? It's not really the life-giving nutrient milk yet. Sucking stimulates the hormone prolactin and that makes sure or guarantees that the mother has enough milk for the next feed. So as the baby feeds along, 
a hormone oxytocin is released and that guarantees that the hind milk now is let down. And this milk is very important. It's a little bit higher in the milk sacs and it takes about three minutes to get there. This milk is the very gold. It's rich in fat, three times more rich in nutrients, and that's the milk your baby needs to thrive and to grow. So if your baby is fussing on your breast after a minute feeding, you know what it means? It means it has maybe finished the formula, but it hasn't got to the hind meal yet. It wants to get there, so take time breastfeeding, don't rush. If both breasts are let down, you know, then encourage the baby to feed up both breasts. But because we want to stop this coagulation of dried milk happening in one of the lactating breasts, um, because that then leads to breast infections. So what are the breast infections? Well, they're usually caused by a blocked duct and it can lead to mastitis or an abscess even. So when one or more milk ducts are blocked by dried milk, the lactating breast can become vulnerable to colonization, even to pus forming organisms. And the breast infection sort of term is quite broad. It can be from the fever to the mastitis, to the abscess, to the lump, even to the fissure, right, in the skin, like a tear in the skin. How to prevent that? If you take care of your health or immune system in the first place, often that can be prevented. So if you have a cold or a cough coming up, you're feeling a little bit under the weather, take your vitamin C, take your vitamin D3. And um, also make sure your bowel flora is intact. Probiotics in the morning maybe, if you have digestive problems. These are the key, little simple keynotes here to prevent the situation to happen. Of course, you want prompt treatment, right, to clear up a blocked duct. And the main symptoms are soreness, there can be a lump, there can be redness or no redness. And if there's redness, it usually sits on top of the lump. If you have fever, then unfortunately it's a sign you may be heading into mastitis. So you need treatment right away. So the first thing what you want to do is hot and cold flannel applications, uh, usually between five to 10 minutes every four to two to four hours. So you take a hot flannel, put it on, alternate it with an ice cold flannel and so on. That maybe uh, can help to bring down the inflammation already. Massage the breast. Here I would say olive oil or coconut oil really helps. Breastfeed, um, you know, I know it's painful, but it's better to breastfeed to unclog this dried milk, even with a pump if needed. Encourage the baby to empty both breasts. And I would say don't stop breastfeeding and just reach for the antibiotics right away. Have a look of what I suggest first. And then, of course, if it's too much, of course, please look out for your uh, MD or your GP and antibiotics are sometimes important. Now, the homeopathic remedies which are available over the counter, I've used thousands of times patients in my practice before, believe me, they work. Yes, and uh, it maybe sounds simple, but have a go. You know, just be more confident and go out in the health workshop and, and look for these remedies. The way you're going to take them, you take one tablet under your tongue or on your tongue and about 10 minutes before and after do not eat and drink. Just let them dissolve and give the body time to let the remedy travel through the body. The first remedy is called Belladonna. Belladonna 30 and 30 means the potency, the strengths. This is a leading remedy for mastitis when you have an acute onset. So it happened just quickly. It's not a slow onset, it's an acute onset. And there's a lot of fever involved. You have maybe a throbbing and bursting pain in the breast. It's a very clear sign of an acute inflammatory process. The affected area is acutely swollen, red, you know, hot to touch. 
And then maybe even if it's really swollen and red, a shiny appearance of the skin, right? sort of a glossy uh, skin. It really is uh, important for a feverish state of mastitis. Let's say you lie in bed and some a friend comes and wants to sit on the side of your bed. Well, that jarring would aggravate the pain in your breast. It's also belladonna. You maybe even have a bursting and throbbing headache with the mastitis. I would say one tablet every hour for the whole day and see how that works and then stop. The next remedy in line is called Bryonia 30. This remedy again indicated for mastitis but for a slow onset. And here it is especially suited for a women where the affected breast as uh, you know, they want to hold it and they even want to lie on it. Let's say the left side is affected, they would lie on the left side of the sore breast just to hold it and to protect it. Again, every movement, every jarring, every slight movement makes it worse. Going upstairs or downstairs, it's just, oh my God, it's too painful. If anybody just knew what mastitis is, it's really painful and these remedies can work very well on the first day. Usually a bryonia person is very thirsty and moody and they want to be, you know, they want to be left alone. Just don't touch me, don't talk to me, it's just too much. So you have taken belladonna, you have taken bryonia, nothing worse. Don't think homeopathy doesn't work in that moment. Maybe you haven't chosen the right remedy and these remedies have no side effects so if you have taken one it's not that you get worse. The next remedy is a little bit difficult to spell. It's called Phytolaca 30 but it's certainly a remedy I would choose if the breast would become very hard and lumpy. And here you have a tender spot. And also when the pain, let's say it's in the left breast, suddenly travels to another location of the body, like into the shoulder. Wonderful remedy for acute infections or an abscess. I really would choose Phytolaca here. Phytolaca one tablet every hour for a day usually stops, I know we can't say cure, but definitely heals these breast infections. What can you do for cracked and sore nipples? Well, the first remedy I would choose is Hepasalf 30 in this case, and that comes when you already have an abscess, um, it's cracked sore the nipple, it's overgrown with staph and strep in, you know, organisms, you have maybe a fungal infection, you maybe have pus coming out, Hepasalf may be the right remedy here course in more advanced stages um, there is an irritability, a uh, very touchiness of the person and I would say at this stage you probably will contact your MD or a GP for that but hey if you are out there in the boonies and you're on holiday and you just have your first aid kit, homeopathic first aid kit at hand, Hepasalf may be the remedy. Again one tablet an hour uh, on a just for one day, see how that works. Then if you have sort of constantly cracked nipples and they don't harden, particularly in the beginning of the breastfeeding phase, there's a remedy called silicea. And silicea is the silica, the quartz crystal. And here I would say the potency is six. The numbers are usually just the, the strengths of the remedy. Again, it's beautifully indicated uh, in the first stages of breastfeeding when you want to harden uh, the nipples and they're sore and tend to crack easily. I would say silica six, four times daily, and just as needed, can be drawn out for a week or two. Uh, as soon as you have improvement set in, please stop because that's the magic of homeopathy. You don't need to take it more often. If you have sort of a stitching-like pain, splinter-like pain while breastfeeding and you have a cracked nipple, that's a very good indication for silica 6. Now, 
you have tried everything, nothing works. I give you another remedy, uh, just as a little hint. It's called Castor Equi, and that's really for hopeless cases. You tried everything the yogurt and the aloe vera application, the cold cabbage leaf, nothing works, right? So I would say Castor Equi on a four times daily, you know, for a week, see if that maybe um, strengthens uh, the cracked nipple in a way that they can heal. So, you have uh, the ice packs, you have the aloe vera uh, application that's wonderful too. It cools the breast really nicely, but always I say massage is the best. Olive oil and coconut oil I can really highly recommend here. Sometimes you have too much milk or too less milk, and what to do then? Well, I would say before you go out and find even natural remedies, I would suggest a nice herbal tea. And I'm going to give you a great recipe here. It's from the famous herbalist Rosemary Gladstone. It is called the Rich Milk Tea. It's Blessed Thistle Tea. One part of Blessed Thistle, four parts of fennel seeds, two parts of nettle and two parts of raspberry leaf. And you use four to six tablespoons. The parts are just really equal, you know, whatever you choose is your part. But choose about four to six tablespoons of that mixture per quart of water. Add herbs to cold water and then slowly boil it and bring it to a heat. Take it off, let it stand there for 20 minutes and then sort of uh, strain it. And drink about three to four cups a day. I would suggest that. And you will maybe see that your milk starts to come in easier and uh, more in quantity. Now, if you want to wean your child's time to separate and you want to reduce the milk flow, parsley or sage tea is quite suggested, right? That might be helping here too. Yes, I think that's it for today. I think I gave you enough suggestions here, home, raw, homemade remedies, and uh, you will see they can work very, very easily. So to stay updated with my ongoing videos, I encourage you to subscribe and share and like these videos with your friends. I mean, these videos should be shared with first-time moms all the time. And if you want to know more about my work, I encourage you to get to my website medicanova.net at the online academy. You will find comprehensive and affordable home study online courses in homeopathy for the whole family, so you can learn more about it. Also, I have a course for pregnancy, labor and postnatal care, very beneficial for midwives, doulas, childbirth educators and nurses even. And if you're interested in a health consultation, either for yourself, your children, your loved ones, family members, you can contact me at my email health at medicanova.net. And for today, much love. Take care.